signal sequence uh, strong sites. Now, if you look at here the translocation of this a protein into the mitochondria, because you know uh, I've told you that we'll be talking about each of those different sections independently. So, if you look at here uh, the translocation into a mitochondria, and how does it actually work? That this nest. So, normally uh, the idea is that we are having an unfolded protein or slightly partially folded protein in the cytoplasm and we need to deliver it inside the mitochondria because if we fold this protein outside the mitochondria in the cytoplasm then it, it won't probably end up inside the mitochondria because remember in all these cases uh, this this uh, proteins are once it's folded it will receive its characteristic structure and once it receives its characteristic structure it will be very difficult for the protein to pass through the pores that are present in uh, this organelle or, or in, in, in the membrane of the mitochondria and all these things okay so for that reason what we need to do we need to uh, deliver these proteins unfold, uh, in an un unfolded conformation inside the organelle first then it is getting folded inside the organelle or inside that destination region more specifically so if you look at here this is the nascent precursor molecule so we need to guide it through a channel inside the organelle and then we need to fold it so there are three major tasks to be done first task is to guide it in such a way so that it is not getting destroyed by the cytoplasm because if there are any hydrophobic residues present in the protein that can be hampered by by the cytoplasmic presence because cytoplasm is mostly made up with water so for that reason uh, we need to take this protein and you can see that at the end terminal end there is a signal that's called the mitochondrial signal sequence now uh, the first important thing is that there are certain proteins that are that are guiding a protein from one region to another region and those proteins are called chaperonin the helper protein they help the proteins to be uh, not to be misfolded actually so, so for example you can see the cytosolic HSC70 it's actually called HSP whatever so this is a kind of protein once it is bound with our uh, our nascent polypeptide here our polypeptide is uh, now good to go but addition of this cytosolic HSC70 requires the hydrolysis of ATP because it requires energy once this process is done in all these cases you can see that once it's done it can directly put this uh, nascent polypeptide onto the receptor present in the outer membrane of mitochondria that's called TOM right so actually there are two types of complexes that guide these proteins to be entered inside the mitochondria one is the TOM which present in the outer membrane another one is TEAM which present in the inner membrane so you can see here the TOM now the TOM here uh, is uh, present in the outer membrane TEAM actually present in the inner membrane so so sorry so let's say let me take a color for you because it will be required in this case okay so if we look at here that this is the tom so it can directly bind it tom and then it can transfer it into the team which is present in inner membrane and then it can enter this protein inside the uh, inside the mitochondria but if you look at here the other stage is uh, uh, via another protein that's called msf or mitochondrial signal a receptor response element that that element is another protein molecule which will recognize the signal or uh, mitochondrial signal sequence that's present in the end terminal region of this nascent polypeptide and it will recognize it it will bind with it and once it's bound with it it's it also requires energy you can see the atp hydrolysis is providing the energy in that case also and then this msf will transfer this nascent peptide to further complex called tom 70 and tom 37 but we've seen in the previous cases if it directly interact with HSC70, it will transfer it into directly into the TOM40, right? So actual way is first TOM70, TOM37. In that case, it need to be transferred into TOM40, then through the channel into TEAM, TEAM17, and so, and then it will be entered inside, right? But if it using if it's using this HSC70, cytosolic HSC70, then the process. Uh, is one step less that's the bounding binding and uh, the action of MSF now once it is entered inside uh, the mitochondria through that place they again require some other HSC protein HSC 70 proteins and these are called matrix HSC 70 proteins because these are they are present in the mitochondrial matrix so this mitochondrial matrix HSC 70 proteins again will use some ATP to be attached with uh, this this peptide that is there and then once bound with it it will take this inside and then it will be added with some other HSC70 HSC proteins which will help and guide this nascent peptide to be folded inside the mitochondria 
and then we get our active proteins inside as you can see here HSC 70 is required some more proteins are required and energy is required so throughout this process there is it requires a lot of energy like ATP hydrolysis in this stage sorry in this stage and many different stages HS, uh, this hydrolysis of ATP is required right so this is a way of how a protein is transferred from a cytosol inside the mitochondria